Hey coaches, Coach Simpson, welcome to my YouTube channel. Excited to kind of get back in the groove of things as the season gets ready to kick off. You know, not very long we're going to be playing football. So one of the things I've been working on, I actually wrote a book a while back uh, that talked about coaching football like a basketball coach, which talked a lot about what I want to spend my, this week uh, as the theme for this channel on concepts over plays. And I'm actually in the middle of working on the next book that'll come out you know, probably in a year or so, uh, that's going to be talking about teaching conceptual football or teaching the game of football, not through the lens of plays, but through the lens of concepts. And what I mean by that is, and this kind of goes back to that basketball analogy, which by the way, if you want that book, it's available on my site, fbcoachsimpson.com. It's coaching football like a basketball coach. Get a little bit more in depth in the book, obviously, than I am right now. But the idea behind teaching a concept over a play is very much a basketball mindset, is where we teach the same um, overview of what we're trying to accomplish. So think about basketball where you run like a pick and roll. Okay, most people understand pick and roll, guys, it's a screen, I come off the screen and you have all of these options that can happen that are completely dependent on what the defense does. So it's not like we're gonna come off the screen, you're gonna take the three. Well, what if the guy closes out on the three and you have to go into all these what if, what if, what if, what ifs. That's how you teach concepts. It's a lot harder on the front end to teach that. But once you teach the concept to your players, they're able to think on their feet. And that's what makes basketball a very good sport, I think. We're starting to see this bleed into football now, where you're starting to see at all levels, NFL, college, I think it really started at the high school level, actually. You're starting to see all of these. We're teaching a concept to our player where, you know, we're going to run four verticals unless, and then you talk about a VR, a vertical release. If I'm capped, I can break it down. Or, hey, we're going to run all verticals, but I want you guys to switch your route so we get kind of a scissors action. Well, that's the same. In my mind, that's the same concept, okay? To a defense, that might look like, oh, they're running all stops, or the outside guys are running stops, or they're running switches, which are all just verticals, but to an offense, that's one concept. That's verticals, okay? So I'm gonna use counter as my example on this, and like I mentioned, the next book I've got coming on, a lot more in depth on this, or you can read the older book, it's got some uh, ideas as well. We're gonna talk about counter being taught as a concept, okay? So I've got three different ways that we're gonna flavor this thing up to make it look different, okay? We're gonna to talk today about how counter can be run by different players. The next day, we're gonna look at how we tag it, how we run different tags with the same concept. It's the same thing for our guys. We're just flavoring it up a little bit, okay? Or how we bring in the RPO world into that. We keep our same concept and we start blending things together. So. Today we're going to talk about how we run counter, what that means, okay? Uh, you can run counter a million different ways. So I, I don't, don't get caught up in this is a wing T version of counter and we don't have a tight end so we do it with our H. Well that's fine, that's your version of counter. Just get the main general point of this is how to think of it as a concept and how to turn one play into many. That's the goal, okay? So for us in our world, counter is a double handoff. So we just call the word counter and say nothing else. Here's how we block this. We're going to block gap down backer on the play side. So in this example, our center would back block a three. Our, our guard would handle the one. Our tackle would free release to whatever shows up. Probably going to be backside linebacker. We're going to pull kick on the force player, which in this case is a five technique. Of course, I'm not going to get into all the essence of counter. We could log that and do it. We're just going to get the basic stuff here. We're going to pull wrap with our tight end, and we're going to gap protect with our tackle. And then if we don't call anything, we just say counter, our, our athletes know we're running the double handoff. Okay, old school, wing tee, double handoff, we're going to get the ball on a take, we're going to give the ball underneath. If you want more resources on exactly this play, you can go to my website, get the playbook, or look at all the other resources that are out there on this. I'm mainly wanting to use it kind of as an example here. All right, so that's counter for us. If we call counter, our athletes know that our wingback's gonna get the ball off a double handoff action, okay? But if we're teaching this as a concept, well now, all we have to do is tag what we wanna do off of this. Again, a very much a basketball mindset. Think back to our pick and roll. 
So if we're going to run pick and roll the basketball and the defense is overplaying it, one of the things you can teach your guy is that we're going to slip back door. So we tag that with a slip or our kid can read it as a slip. He's going to pretend to set the screen and slip. And we're going to give him the ball there for a layup. Okay, so now for, for football, the same thing. We're going to tag that concept. So counter, now we want to tag it where we're going to run it with our running back. Our F is what we call him. You may call him your T, whatever it is. We're going to tag that he's going to run counter. We can do this a couple different ways. We could run it out of normal, we could run out of the pistol, we could run it out of strong. It doesn't really matter. It just means he's got to get the ball and end up where counter is supposed to go. And it lets our wing know you're not getting the ball. So he may be out here in trips. He could be attached as a wing. He could be out at receiver. It doesn't matter. He knows I'm not getting the ball. So in this scenario, I'm just going to protect. Maybe this guy's making plays. We're going to keep him home to protect for that. Okay. Uh, or they're reading him possibly, they're reading our wing, and so we want to go, we want to run counter the concept, we don't want to run with that guy because they're reading him for whatever reason. So now we're going to run it same side, we're going to take the ball here, take a counter, and then we're going to hit it same side. We could run this out of the pistol, we could run it on the same side. It's just a new way to run the same concept. Notice none of these guys learned anything different. They blocked the same thing, they blocked counter. The only guy that had to change was our skill guys that were involved. It's a very easy tag for them. To a defense, this may look like a different play, but in reality for us offensively, it is the same concept. We're teaching counter. We're just gonna run it with our running back instead of the double handoff. So that would be F counter. Okay, very easy tag. All right, let's say we don't wanna run that one. Maybe our quarterback is a great athlete, okay? This could be for a variety of reasons. I'm not going into all the reasoning behind it, but usually there's a reason you do this. You don't just do it to have fun. You're doing it to take advantage of a defense. Perhaps when you go empty, the defense is gonna give you a different look. We're gonna lighten the box. So we wanna run counter, but we'll run with our quarterback. Or perhaps they're flowing very hard off the running back and we wanna flash that ball and run counter with our quarterback. It's the same blocking for all of these guys, the concept did not change. Who we ran the ball with changed, okay? So we can run it a couple of ways, depending on how the defense is playing this back. If they're in man, we may flare him out and get him to vacate the spot we wanna run counter. So we may go here, get this linebacker, maybe playing man-to-man -man on that back to vacate and run Q counter. If they're not playing man, we may wanna flash him across our face. It doesn't really matter you pick what you're gonna to use to take advantage of the defense. The point is the same. We're gonna teach the same concept. So if he flares and they go, the quarterback looks at him, sets the blocking up, same concept, and then the Q runs counter. It's the same concept. We're just running it with a different player, okay? To me, that's the way we look at everything we do. And if you're going to get to this point offensively, that means you can't have a whole lot of concepts because you're starting to see how involved these can become. If we're going to run counter, we're going to be really, really good at running counter. You're starting to see a lot of offenses move to this because it looks like, man, you guys only run like five plays. Well, the reality is, one, we call them concepts, not plays. And two, we have so many flavors off of this, not even getting into formations, but to a defense, that looks completely different. It almost looks like a different play to them. But for us, offensively, it's the same concept. Okay. Again, if you want more information on double handoff, I've got that on my website. You can get off the playbook. You can get it off of a couple different videos I've got on it. If you want more information on this theory of concepts over plays, I've got a book out, Coaching Football Like a Basketball Coach. It's on Amazon or my website. i got a new book coming out. I'm excited about that. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Don't forget the rest of this week, I'm gonna go through the tags we use. So that's the first part of teaching a concept. We, we, we can do this with multiple guys. Well, the next part is, well, now we're gonna start messing a little bit with the blocking. It's the same concept, but we're gonna tweak the blocking a little bit to make it work for us. And then we'll get into RPOs, how we bring the RPO world into the same thing. So we take a concept and make it look very, very different to a defense. Appreciate you tuning in. If you have not already done so, you can subscribe to this channel down below. I'm trying to put out as much as I can on YouTube, free information for coaches. Appreciate if you like the video. Comment down below if you're doing some similar things. I'd like to get ideas from you as well.